Janine, this raises the question, if these things occurred in America on the 13th of March 2020, mm -hmm. can you explain how that's relevant or applicable far away here in Australia? Okay, well, if you look at the current Australian government logo, it's of a kangaroo and an emu, and I'll turn this around just so you can get a, a sighting of that, hopefully, for the for the viewers. Yes. Okay, that, that is not the original logo of the um, Commonwealth Australian Government. I'm not sure of its, of its exact name, but it had a logo of a lion and a unicorn. Um, so we're operating under a different government now and according to the research that's been done at the website called www.truth-now.com, the research there has revealed that this Australian government that we are now operating under is a Washington corporation. Um, that was established in 1973 at the same time, according to my research, that Australia signed onto Unidroit law. So Unidroit law is Roman law, um, it is contract law, and that is the legal system that we are under now. And that's what most people who are um, fighting the COVID policies in some way because they're all intended to to destroy us in some way most of us are discovering that we're under contract law in in the um, in the courts and uh, that's where this contract law began and that's how it began so we are not under the original constituted government of Australia a counterfeit government has been put in place a counterfeit parliament and a counterfeit um, constitution that we're operating under according to the information at truth dash now um, does this mean it would have more of a corporate structure than a typical democracy government more of a corporation than it, a exactly exactly it's been established as a corporation so it's not functioning um it, it's functioning in a um in oh well, actually i'm about to reveal how it's functioning and it's and it's just diabolical it's incomprehensible um just new information that's come through this morning and i'm still trying to wrap my head around it so everyone's trying to get their head around what's really going on and i think we're getting to where the rubber meets the road now Okay. So the question you asked before was how does this impact on the COVID policies that we're under? Well, I've tried to answer that question for myself. So I've looked up what were the, um, uh, the meeting dates of the National Cabinet and um, we have... Uh, we have a list of the meeting dates of the cabinet, but it is missing some of them um, And this is available just at wikipedia.org. That's where I've gone uh, I'm sure there's better information available. This was just very quick after I learned about this this morning um, So there's let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11 national cabinet meetings listed here on Wikipedia and they seem to be quite comprehensive in terms of moving the rollout of COVID-19 policies on. Um, so for example on the 16th of March 2020 um, announcement of a significant step up to the pandemic upon the advice of the AHPPC additional measures in order to reduce community transmissions. These include banning cruise ships from docking, enhanced screening of arrivals, mandatory self-isolation. They also activated, this is very intriguing, the second stage of the Australian Health Sector Emergency Response Plan for Novel Coronavirus, which enables governments to undertake targeted action and ensures that resources are properly allocated where needed and the risk to vulnerable people in the community are mitigated. So this would happen on the 16th of March. 25th of March, the PM announces the creation of the National COVID Coordination Commission. Um, and clarifies the roles of various bodies. The National Cabinet continues to lead the national responses at a government level. The National Security Committee of Cabinet's COVID-19 Task Force and the Expenditure Review Committee of Cabinet continues to take decisions that determine the Commonwealth's 
response to the global COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so they're happening at a very high level, you know, the, uh, the formation of commissions and um, committees and so on and task force and so on. Um, so without, you know, it would take quite a bit of research to determine, but I would imagine that most of our COVID policies have been formed by the National Cabinet, have come down through the, through the National Cabinet because it was established on that date. And it is, to my understanding, it is what is governing Australia right now. Does this mean that the National Cabinet and the Federal Cabinet, you mentioned both names, are they separate distinct things? I mean, national and federal right. generally tends to mean them the, the same thing, but is there yeah. a difference? From what I understand, um, the National Cabinet has taken over from COAG um, and it is and is replacing COAG, um, but I don't... I haven't had time to do enough research to give you a really definite answer on that but I'm putting the information out there for people to do further research on so please don't take anything I say as absolute truth please go and check this out for yourself please go and do the research that's what I would encourage everybody to do but I believe the information is is hugely significant given that um, according to a particular document that I've pulled up here um, Parliament is suspended so as of that day Parliament was suspended so let's talk a little bit about FEMA who was empowered by that national state of emergency announcement on the 13th of the 3rd in Washington on in 2020 so FEMA um, is a collection of executive orders that have been made by US presidents over the years it was established by Brzezinski, Brzezinski, he's a communist and the principles of uh, FEMA are communist principles and so anybody who has had any idea of what's been going on in our, on our, in our world have been looking very closely at FEMA. Um, people might have heard of FEMA camps established all over America, they're concentration camps um, Many reporters have gone out there and they've uh, documented that these uh, camps actually exist. And so people have wanted to know what's really going on and what is FEMA all about. So FEMA has the capacity under various executive orders um, that are far and above and beyond all of the um, government functions in America. In America um, that is ruled by Washington, uh, you have the uh, judiciary, you have the executive and you have the legislative branches. Um, but FEMA has the capacity to shut down the government. It has the capacity to um, suspend the constitution, it has the capacity to implement martial law, it has the capacity to um, take over the transport system, to shut down all transportation, uh, the capacity to uh, shut down the utilities and take them over, to shut down the food supplies, take them over. It has the capacity to move populations and separate populations and to put them in FEMA camps. So this is a power that is above all uh, legislated power in America. But then you've got to think America's been controlled by Washington. Washington is a part of a tripartite power system that is ruled by Rome. Um, Washington representing the military arm, Rome representing the financial arm and the Vatican representing the religious arm. And um, so um, Washington has been ruling America but as we know now our government is a Washington corporation. So how far does this go? How many other countries have become Washington corporations. The fact that this pandemic and all its policies have been rolled out all over the world, um, I don't know how many nations but you know it's been um, fairly global. Now not every nation has um, incorporated these 
um, policies um, quite the same as Australia and various other nations like France or Canada or, or, or uh, England um, and I'm sure there's many others so forgive me if I've missed some and forgive me if I've named the wrong ones but that's just what comes to mind um, but yeah the question is how far does this go and, um, and I think Australia um, seems to be a bit of a guinea pig, um, you know, a testing ground for these policies to, as to how far they can go. And um, Australians need to know that, you know, according to this information, um, these COVID policies are not lawful. Now, let's take that to the next level. And um, if you go to Reignite Democracy, they have a lot of um, documents on their website to use to defend our civil rights. So this really is an attack, as I've been saying all along. It's an attack by Rome, who hates civil and religious freedom. And uh, we have to stand up for our common law rights and our civil freedoms um, if we want to survive. And um, this little paper here came from Reignite Democracy. And it is a list of all the laws that these COVID um, mandates and orders are breaching. Um, now just to be a little bit more specific, most of these orders are coming down under the public health orders but according to this article, the curious case of the unlawful public health orders, um, Peter Pham, who is a human rights law lawyer in Sydney, um, states that the Biosecurity Act overrides the Public Health Act. So because it overrides the Public Health Act, let's look at what the Biosecurity Act actually states. I'm going to read this out. This comes from this document here called uh, A Simple and Practical Guide for Businesses and this is from Reignite Democracy and on the back it states concerning the Biosecurity Act 2015. Now it states here concerning the Biosecurity Act which is above the Public Health Act or order under which all of our uh, COVID um, orders are being given. Um, it states here this legislation is designed to contain epidemics and pandemics in Australia. When applied it basically gives the federal government emergency powers it normally wouldn't have in normal circumstances. What most people don't realise is that it pays to understand the Biosecurity Act so there's not an overreach of powers from authorities. Here are some of the key points. The Act has priority over all state and territory legislation during an emergency. The Federal Government can declare an emergency if it is satisfied a listed human disease is posing a severe and immediate threat or is causing harm to human health on a nationally significant scale and the declaration is necessary to contain the disease. Further, the Health Minister may impose specific requirements regarding the movement of people or goods. However, you still have rights. Unless authorities can show that you are exposed to a risk to the disease or you have signs and symptoms of that disease, no law or policy can require you to be bodily sampled, vaccinated, detained, isolated, mandated to wear a mask unless it is under strict circumstances. So bearing in mind everything I've shared already, which is that um, the uh, national cabinet under which these laws have been given are illegal. Given that, we're looking at original legislation that has been in place to cover this. And I'm showing, going to show you how the the way these COVID policies are being put out, they are not even following their own legislation, this Biosecurity Act. So a biosecurity order can be put on somebody only by an authorised officer, specifically a chief human biosecurity officer, a human biosecurity officer or a biosecurity officer and not police. You do not need to comply with anything unless you have been issued with a biosecurity control order 
detailing a list of very specific things for example proving that you are infectious this is the law perfectly healthy people should not be required to do anything because the presumption under the biosecurity act is that you are healthy until you are proven sick not the other way around as the covid policies uh, have been mandated Interestingly, force must not be used against someone to get them to com comply with certain measures in the Biosecurity Act. So here are some questions you can pose to police officers. Are you an authorised officer? Am I at risk? And has a medical practitioner assessed my infectious risk status? Have you issued me a specific biosecurity control order specifying all reasons? Knowing even just these basic facts about the Biosecurity Act will get you a long way and you can read the Act further at www.legislation.gov.au. So I'm just going to read the whole of this back page because it's very, very helpful. Get educated and know the facts. Remember mandates and directives from the government or any other authority are not law. Our natural rights are actually enshrined within natural law and common law, which have been used to govern and keep peace in communities since earliest civilizations. Bodily sovereignty is one of these rights. Bodily sovereignty therefore means the right to bodily integrity, to not be assaulted by an injection that is injecting a poison, because guess what, an antigen, which the mRNA technology in the in the uh, vaccines uh, is injecting and it is recognized by the Australian military that they are injecting a poison. So here's the thing, bodily sovereignty is one of these rights. Most of Australia's media is owned by two corporations. I don't know, they've just put that bit of information in there, very significant. In other words, you're not necessarily getting independent, truthful information from the media. So try and seek out independent sources of information and use alternative search engines, for example DuckDuckGo and Ecosia. Do your own research, think critically and without bias and ultimately our actions will all create the reality that we live in. To learn more about your rights you can visit I am an essential business dot com, uh, solutionsempowerment.com, knowyourrights.com, john8.net, constitutionwatch.com.au, operationshop.org, reigniteddemocracyaustralia.com.au, copyrightclaimservices.com, uh, tombarnett.tv and empoweredlifestyleacademy.com. So that's the page there and I highly recommend that everybody print, um, go to uh, Reignite Democracy, print this out and hand it to every shop in your area. Set our shops free because they are the middleman in this imposition of these unlawful orders and mandates. And just to refresh the viewers and listeners' memory about the website is reignitedemocracy.com Okay, Dot, good question. Um, I did read it out here, so it's reignited, no, sorry, reignitedemocracyaustralia.com.au.